Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. We've got some pretty fruity clips picked out for you this week. Of course, this is my weekly series where I show you clips of uh, false teachers, false prophets, those who would corrupt the Word of God. And we want to expose them because they are actively shipwrecking the faith of untold millions around the world. So we want to stand in opposition. So we are going to get right into the shoot, and we are going to fire this up. You guys ready? Here we go. And Friday, Friday, in town on Friday. All right, thanks, Rebecca Black. It's good to always have Rebecca remind us that it is Friday. And so first, we are going to look at Celestial from the Master's Voice blog. And uh, Celestial is one of those who speaks very well and she wants you so very desperately to believe that she is a prophet but she's not and so we want to just continue to expose her in the hopes that she will repent through the fear of god stop lying in the name of jesus christ so we're going to listen to some clips today and then we're going to comment as we go so here we go so this was a prophetic word that was delivered to me as soon as i came out of sleep this is God's fashion. It's either he's visiting me in my sleep, talking to me, showing me mind movies, showing me um, visions of the night, which are prophetic dreams, or sometimes he will wait by the bed like a puma. And the second I open my eyes, Lord God is already like, oh, good. Thank God. She's awake. Or sometimes he will wait by the bed like a puma. Puma, and the second I open my eyes, Lord God is already like, oh, good, thank God, she's awake, great, let's get started. All right, so, yeah, quite fascinating. Here is uh, Celestial testifying that God is saying things like, oh, I've been waiting, thank God. God, Celestial is awake now, we can get started. So God is saying, thank me that Celestial's awake. We can carry on about some business now because, you know, the person that's at the center of it all, Celestial, is finally awake and even God waits on Celestial. That's how important she is. And people just hear this and they're like, Oh my goodness, Celestial is just way more important than I ever gave her credit for. And why do they believe this? Well, because she said it. She told the story. Hey folks, hey kids, gather around. Here's a cute little story. Sometimes when I'm sleeping, I wake up and God is waiting for me to wake up. And he's like a, like a little tickly puma and he pounces on me and says, great, Celestial's finally awake. Now the kingdom of God can carry on its business because the chosen one's awake. See how ridiculous this is? If you understand, if, if you can try to understand the narcissism of these social media prophets who place the center of all things as revolving around them, and people are like, oh, Drew, you better be careful with Celestial. She's very powerful. Why do you think they think she's powerful? Well, because she tells stories uh, of her being powerful. <laughs> so the fear is being produced by Celestial and spewed out through the airwaves, through the social media airwaves. And sadly, it works. But take a look at this. I've taken the liberty to type out that small blurb of what she said there, word for word. Here's what she said. So this was the prophetic word that was delivered to me as soon as I came out of sleep. This is God's fashion. It's either he's visiting me in my sleep, talking to me, showing me mind movies, showing me visions of the night, which are prophetic dreams, or sometimes he will wait by the bed like a puma. And the second I open my eyes, the Lord God is already like, oh, good. Thank God she's awake. Great. 
let's get started and he will start talking to me blah 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 look at this right here see how utterly disturbing this is god thanks himself that celestial's awake and again i can't emphasize i know i'm carrying on a little bit about this but again try to understand the god of all creation the god of all the universe waiting in new york city for celestial to wake up so he can get started just try to let that sink in or that even she as a human would describe our living god as sometimes he will wait by the bed like a puma and then as soon as she opens her eyes the lord god is already like ah good thank god she's awake. so on and on yep carry on a little bit about this this is how dastardly this is and so one of the things you'll always see is uh, if you were to read this right here uh, you would think celestial is even more important than god because even god is thanking himself that celestial's awake thank myself that she's awake that's it's just so unbelievable but here it is so again let this let this soak in this is the reality of social media narcissistic false prophets who often degrade god as to having him waiting god's waiting on me that's how important i am and so yeah i'm carrying out a little bit about this but i have to to try to hit every detail because it is that astonishing and everyone will yell at me and they'll come and they'll, they'll leave their nasty comments but here is a woman who said that god travels to new york city to wait for her to wake up it's just unbelievable all right let's watch the next clip mystery babylon the great that you can find in the book of revelation is the united states she was once a glorious nation she was precious and marvelous she was once a golden cup in the lord's hand this nation was once a holy vessel so clean that god himself was able to pour his wine into her and drink it this speaks of the amazing revivals of the spirit that that once kindled in this nation uh you know charles finney and Smith Wigglesworth, there were some amazing evangelists, prophets, pastors, William Branham, William Branham, William Branham. You know, and and um, I think her name is Maria Woodworth Edder, and uh, just so many can I call them? It's, it's hard to get the right word. Trailblazers. All right, people, I get it. You love Celeste, Celestial, I get it. You know, be fooled by her demeanor and her presence. Be fooled with her vocabulary and her delivery. Be fooled by her threats and intimidation. You know, be fooled by her self-testifying and her storytelling. But, oh, my golly and good grief, do not be fooled by who she just honored and is promoting in William Branham. Unbelievable. Now she named off four people, all of who were heretics. But the one that takes the cake is William Branham. He is the king of the frauds. All right, so anyone that knows their Bible and history should and could easily discern that by Celestial testifying for William Branham, you can and should easily and immediately dis dismiss Celestial on every level of every brain cell that she is every bit the fraud that I'm telling you she is. Just by this right here, by honoring William Branham. If you took Kenneth Copeland and mixed in some Todd Bentley, threw in a little bit of Joyce Meyer, Sprinkled in a couple of spoonfuls of Jim Jones, added a cupful of Benny Hinn, kneaded in some David Hogan, and then dumped in a truckload of Catherine Kuhlman, and spliced together all that DNA, you'd produce this super heretic right here, 
William Branham. That's how bad this guy was, and his teachings are still out there today. One of the greatest heretics in memory is William Branham. In fact, it would be easier for you to make a list of heretical teachings that he didn't teach compared to the ones that he did teach. That's how bad this guy was. So does this alone disqualify Celestial? Absolutely it does. This alone would disqualify her from all of her boasts of being this prophet of God. Now you might ask why. Well, she says she talks to God. She has conversations with God. God waits like a puma at her pet. Oh, hurry up, Celestial, wake up so I can pounce on you with prophecy information. That's how important you are. Yet, not important enough for God to tell her, hey, William Branham is a raging heretic and a racist, strong ties to the KKK. So yes, absolutely, this alone would disqualify this woman right there. But I will point you over here. And Celestial, if you're watching, you might want to check out this channel. One of the best channels, hands down, on YouTube. Absolutely fantastic. This channel is just about 100% entirely dedicated to exposing the cult of William Branham and all the Branhamites. He's even got his website. And I want you to think about this. There is so much content that this man uh, has and can produce on William Branham that it's, it's almost exclusively dedicated to exposing William Branham. So just video after video after video exposing William Branham. And that's how heretical and horrible this man was. So again, for Celestial to promote him really demonstrates her naivety, uh, willful naivety, and lack of discernment, and quite frankly, lack of a truth. This alone disqualifies her. It's that bad. I can't emphasize that. All right, so let's move on. All right, next we're looking at Daniel Adams. I talked a little bit about this on my live stream last week. Yeah, he made a video here. Of course, Daniel Adams is the world-famous social media demon slayer. And here he wants to take you to the gym. So he's got a cameraman. He's throwing on some music. He's going to put some production value into this. And he's going to take you to the gym because he wants you to know how jacked he is. It's very important that you know this. What does this have to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, nothing. He just wants you to see his body. Now, this is problematic because Daniel has been married three times. So what's the remedy for that kind of a problem? Well, put videos on showing, showing his muscular body at the gym. I'm sure this is going to help, right? No, it's not. But nevertheless, this is what narcissists do. Now, he's got a fake ministry of demon slaying or casting out demons. Uh, and you, if you don't believe me, you can check it out. He's got special effects that he adds. And he's got willing subjects. And he's got scary cartoonish thumbnails. Uh, and he's a good actor. So he's more than likely made a lot of money doing what he does. But it is fraudulent. And so I wanted to just put this out here. This shouldn't be, uh, especially again with his problem, his problematic history. Uh, I would ask you, Daniel, where's your wife? Is she okay with all this? Because that is concerning. And I know that the followers will say, Drew, you're just jealous because you're not as jacked as Daniel. And that may be, but either way, we'll never know because I'm not going to post pictures of me at the gym. Because it is a problem. I don't think my wife would like that. And any man of God who has hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers worldwide, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Again, you could be casting stumbling blocks in the paths of many women who show up because they want to meet their rock star, jacked, demon slayer, and it's not right. So uh, I think... Daniel, if you were listening, I think I've made a pretty good case for you to take this down, even if for nothing else to honor your wife. You know, honor this uh, and uh, 
ask yourself, what good can come from this? And the answer is nothing. Everybody can tell you're jacked, bro. You know, everybody can tell you don't need to go to the gym and make things worse or uh, possibly put yourself on a path for number four, if you know what I'm talking about. So take it down and repent. And by the way, also, after you do that, shut down your fake ministry of demon slaying and serve the Lord in truth and sincerity. So uh, another thing with that, that I'd want to show you uh, just to kind of confirm is this right here. Prophet Lovey. He's also another narcissist who likes to post pictures of him at the gym getting jacked. And this is what they all do. Right. So, uh, again, what does this have to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Nothing. These are just narcissists that can't resist social media. They love the attention and the millions and millions of fans who just shower them with the comments of, wow, you're so jacked, you're awesome. Anyway, I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, let's move on. While this is a hypothetical question for me, and I pray for you, it, it's a very real question to a dear friend who um, has asked me to counsel with him on this. But should a Christian attend the homosexual marriage of one of his children. You know, what's interesting about that, especially is the personal aspect, you know, uh, yes. you're talking about one of your children. And, you know, we did an article in Christian Research Journal. It was actually a debate. Uh, one of the debaters is Michael Ross. The other is Joe Dallas. And I tend to agree with virtually everything Joe Dallas says on the subject of same-sex marriage. But in this particular case, I actually take the position of Michael Ross. I would attend that marriage. I certainly would be very candid and open in terms of what my belief was. And with a family member, that probably wouldn't be a surprise. But I wouldn't shun that family member because I'd always want the door to reconciliation to be wide open. Sometimes there's a divide that comes as a result of these sorts of things, and I don't think that we should shun those that we so desperately want to reach. So I personally would attend that wedding. All right, so that's Hank Hanegraaff, who's the Bible Answer Man. 65,000 subscribed to him. He's also the president of the Christian Research Institute. Many look to him for biblical answers and questions about doctrine. But after you heard that last question and answer, you can probably guess that someone like Hank is, you know, he's not helping the body of Christ by giving his approval to attend Adam and Steve weddings. Because, well, might be your kid. You don't want them, you don't want to shun that family member. and You always want to leave that door of reconciliation open. So go ahead and attend this unholy, ungodly union of sorts. What do you guys think? Do you think that his answer was biblical? Well, here's a spoiler alert. No, no, it is it is not a biblical answer. One of the worst answers that any man who proclaims to name the name of Christ could give. It is as unholy as one could get, and quite frankly, shocking. Hank Hanegraaff needs to repent for that godless, awful answer. How many people will have had listened to that answer and will now compromise their Christian doctrine and belief and go ahead and attend these, like I said, Adam and Steve weddings, which are not ordained by God. They're not holy by any stretch of the imagination. And they will attend these ceremonies. They will watch two men kiss or two women kiss. They will watch them cuddle and snuggle and dance together and, you know, do toasts all night and celebrate an unholy, ungodly union. And they will attend these because of Hank. They will compromise their faith because of Hank. And I just kind of pause here and people wonder how Satan gets into the church. Satan doesn't have to sneak in anymore. Satan is invited in by guys like Hank here. So let's look at some scripture. In Mark chapter 10, let's scroll down, look at verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, 
and they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Now Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You can even go to 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, although these Adam and Steve weddings are not secret. Verse 11 applies. You do not fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, period. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, watch this. Look at verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Right? Look at verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Also, just to add a few more points here. If your loved one sees that you compromised your Christian faith and you are attending their wedding, their Adam and Steve wedding, it shows them that you're not serious about your Christian faith and you're not doing them any favors. They're going to have no desire to come to Christ. You didn't hold your convictions. You compromised. Therefore, your Christ must be weak. This is what they'll think. And also, you're not doing them any favors because now they don't have a path to the truth. See, by not attending, you're telling them, look, I can't, my God forbids me. This is how unholy your union is. My God forbids me to even fellowship with you on this matter, right? Uh, I'll always be there for you if you have questions to direct you to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are on your way to hell because of this. I want you to know that, but I tell you this in love. I don't want you to go to hell. So come to Christ. Stop this unholy union. Do not do this, for it will cost you your soul. It's going to contribute to cost the cost of your soul. So Hank is not doing them any favor. It, it's a tragedy all the way around. What an absolute horrific answer he gave and what he's telling anyone that will listen to do. Yeah, go ahead and attend this unholy union because you might reconcile one day. No, no, no. Let me show you one more verse. We're in Matthew 10. Let's scroll down. We're going to start in verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So understand what that's saying. Uh, you side with Jesus no matter what. You are a new creature born again in Christ. So you do not support unholy things. You do not fellowship with them. You do not walk in that type of filth even if it's a father or a mother or a son or a daughter you hold jesus at the top in the highest amen so hank if you're listening take that video down repent please go read your bible and if you're one of those that is on the fence as to whether you think it might be okay to attend and celebrate an adam and steve wedding then ask yourself this would Jesus go? Of course not. Weddings are between a man and a woman as ordained by God, not Adam and Steve. So that's your answer. Who do you love most? And I hate to really break it down, but I would be caught, I wouldn't be caught dead attending one of those because I love my God more than anything. So I hope to God, and I really mean that, I hope to God that you will not compromise and attend one of those in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, guys. Man, it, it does feel like home here, just so you know. Though I wore this shirt thinking, surely winter is over, but <laughs> I guess I need to learn. <laughs> 
Man, well, I'm excited for today. I really feel that uh, I'm coming here this morning with an assignment. Um, how many of you guys have been dreaming lately? Anybody? Yeah? Awesome. Well, I believe after this morning, there's going to be some impartation and some dreams are going to start to awaken in your life. And I don't just say that uh, because I, I hope that happens. I say that because that's what the Lord told me is going to happen. So, um, amen. <laughs> so I played that clip right from the beginning so you can see that this is how Andrew Whalen entered. And these are the first words that he spoke to this particular church body. How many of you have been dreaming lately? A lot of hands went up. Wow, that's great. And then he said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, but he said, well, I believe this morning there's going to be some impartations because you know why? Because that's what God told me, which is a contradictory because then it's not really a belief. It's a fact. It's not a belief. It's a fact. So he's winging it, but he's emphasizing the dreams, the impartations, so on and so forth, claiming that God told him that when you go to this such and such church, you're going to impart. And then he later goes on, I'm not going to play it, but he later goes on to talk about the fire of the Holy Spirit, which is not good. All right. Um, and you can go watch. That's why I kept the title up there. You can go watch this. But I just wanted to play this clip. Because if this is the way these young alleged prophets are going in and getting people excited about dreams, this is wrong. Uh, men and women, boys and girls, should be excited about the holy word of God, which is enough. It is overwhelmingly enough, the word of God. Quite frankly, it would be my wish to become as sound in biblical doctrine in my human life. I could give, or I should say, I couldn't give two bits about any dreams, and I would trade all the dreams for understanding in biblical doctrine and to draw closer to God through his word because it honors God. And so uh, even though this was just one small clip, uh, I wanted to play it so that if you are a young person or even a seasoned human being, you've been on the earth for a while, please run from this. I don't want people, and you shouldn't want people, to get excited and clap about dreams. Hey, hey guys, how many, how many of you have been having dreams, huh? Isn't it cool? No. It should be how many of you are excited about the Word of God. How many of you, raise your hand, have read the Bible today or lately. Let's see how many hands go up then. You won't see as many. But people are being so inundated with social media prophets and false teachers that it's all about the prophecies and the dreams and these alleged supernatural things that are happening. And you don't hear too much about the actual Word of God. So this is me just giving you encouragement. Let me see a ray. You know, you're right there listening to my voice. Raise your hand if you've read a book of the Bible lately. And I hope, at least here on my channel, that all of you raised your hand. And if you didn't raise your hand, then please, by all means, take this opportunity to stop with the dreams, stop with the fantasy, and read your awesome Bible in Jesus Christ's name. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I want to thank you for stopping in and playing this clip because... Well, this was just the fruitiest thing that I saw all week. So I want to remind you to serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. Stay away from fantasy. Read your Bible and love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and all your strength. Watch Joe. That kid is creeped out, right? Is he going to go in for the final sniff? Hold on here. There he goes. Oh, this is so fruity. He's sniffing her. Oh, goodness, goodness. Very creep. Creep factor just broke the creep scale. Anyway, 
God bless you guys. Hope you had a good laugh. Uh, we'll see you next time.